thing. Um, here I am at work in my very glamorous poly tunnel. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to make it a summer pot with summer bedding plants. So this is hopefully one of these packs you'll all be getting um, delivered sometime soon for you to have a little play with. And then I've got a, another selection of um, bed, summer bedding plants to, to talk you through the different types that we've got. It's all fairly basic. I'm sure I'll be teaching quite a few of you to suck eggs. So just bear with me, whatever your level of knowledge. Um, so first of all, I'm going to be making up this pot. Um, we sell lots of made up pots here and um, some hanging baskets that we've uh, made up for sale that we'll be selling later on. We make them up, let them fill out and then we um, put them outside. So this pot we'll be doing the same. I'll make it up and then we'll be selling it later on. So I've chosen a nice glazed blue pot and so that will determine the choice of plants that I put in it because it's quite nice to um, to consider the colour and the type and style of the pot that you've got. So as most of you might already know in the bottom of the pot you need to put what we usually call crocs which is usually broken up old probably terracotta pots or bits of stone or brick. What we tend to use at Rowan is what we've got lying around so we use these um, old pots and sometimes polystyrene um, which also makes them quite light, which is quite useful if you're making pots at home that you don't want to move around. And that will help with drainage later on so the pots don't get waterlogged. And then I'm going to put in some compost and I've got some peat-free compost here, which is obviously the best thing to do. Now I fill it to about 10 centimetres from the top of the pot, which is basically the depth of the plants or thereabouts. Um, and fill it then firm it slightly don't need to level it or can't you know worry too much about it so the next thing i'm going to do is add a little bit of slow release feed which we've got here and some water gel which absorbs water just a sprinkling of the slow release pellets which it says lasts for six months not convinced it does but it'll certainly keep the pot going throughout the summer and then you can top up later on and they're a bit like um I always like them to little aniseed balls and sort of wash away with the water layer after layer. So that's just a bit of extra feed for the plants because bedding plants are quite hungry because they produce so many flowers. Then this little gel has a spoon in it, which we've lost, and you literally just need a little sprinkle on the top there, which, and that's enough because it swells and swells and swells. Then we're going to put some more compost on. Now, in the centre of the plant, I'm going to be putting an, what an, an upright plant, so something that will grow upwards, and then around the edge we're going to have trailing plants. Over here, we've got examples of um, more permanent planting that go in the pots in the middle. Um, so these are quite formal tokery, we've got the bay, the uh, rosemary, and this is quite interesting to any of you who are gardeners and have got box in your garden. Um, it looks like box, but it's not, it's a type of um, holly and ilex and this won't get attacked by the um, box caterpillars. So this is much, you know, getting much more popular um, because you don't have to deal with those pesky caterpillars. And as a, an owner of a garden with a lot of box, I think it's brilliant. These little um, cordial lines are also quite formal, good in the, in, the, in the sun. It's nice to have something with height in the middle and then the trailers around the edge. If your pot is going in the corner, you might want to consider putting the um, height at the edge and then the trailers around the edge because you won't need any trailers around the back of it. So for hanging baskets, um, if they're against a wall, you might not want trailers all around it. So consider where you're actually going to be positioning the pot as well. It's a blue pot, so I'm going to be going uh, quite traditionally with blues, pinks and whites. So that means in the middle, I'm gonna put an upright geranium. A, um, which is not flowering yet, but it soon will be. I just squeeze the pot to release it slightly. Um, make a big hole in the middle. Don't worry about spilling it, because I probably will. And don't worry too much about breaking it. They're more robust than you think they are. People who do pot workshops with me or pre-COVID get quite nervous about taking plants out of pots and that they're gonna break them, but it very, very rarely happens. So we're gonna pop that in the middle and firm it in and firm a bit of compost around it. I'm, I've got a selection of bedding plants here just to show you the different types. Obviously um, for sale, you know, in, in our bedding area, we've got 
lots of different colours of lots of different types. So this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny selection. You've literally got hundreds. But just to point out the um, slight, slight differences, this one is called Million Bells, Calibre Co. It's like a small petunia. And they're great because you don't have to deadhead them. So always a winner. And these are Vena, which are very popular. And this, these are these are trailed profusely. These are what we call semi-trailing. So they go across and then down, but not quite so much. So they're quite good sort of mid-story. And then these million bells really drape down. We've got the good old Lobelia blue, which is brilliant with the blue. And you don't get very many true blue flowers. So that's very popular. We've got this rather wacky um, petunia. We've also got some foliage plants, which I really love. This is a lovely zingy lime plant. Um, a Lizzie Mackie. It doesn't flower, but with the sort of dark purples and all the greens, it really jumps out. So always worth considering a foliage plant. And then we've got this other little variegated Nepeta, which drapes a lot, um, which is also another foliage plant. And then of course, ivy, which is permanent. So you could pop some ivy in and then uh, have it in kind of forever really, and just refresh around it. So I'm gonna choose my plants. I'm going to go down the pink, blue, white route, possibly a bit of purple. And I'm going to lay them out in a line, which um, I'm just going to pop out what I might be using. Now, the question I get asked a lot is how many plants do I need, which is uh, not surprising because it's quite tricky to work out. As a rule of thumb, um, we say measure the diameter of the pot in inches and it's half that figure. So if you have a 12 inch pot, 12 inch diameter pot, you'll need six trailers. If you have a 14 inch pot, which is a lot of the standard hanging baskets, you'll need seven around the edge and then something in the middle. That's packing it in quite well and you'll get a really lovely pot. You could put in one less, but um, I think with bedding plants, more is more quite frankly. You want that sort of abundance and profusion of color. So this is about a 12 inch pot, so we should be able to squeeze six in. In a circular pot, you know, you're starting and finishing. If you put them in that order, you'd end up with two whites next to each other. Not the end of the world, clearly, but you might want to be juggling around. So we're kind of going, we've got a slightly darker one here and the blue. So we're going to be alternating white, pink, blue, bluey, purple. This has obviously got white and pink in it. so is very useful. Right, so we're going to start putting the plants in, in this order, and literally pop one out on its side. And then what I'd like to do is I'd plant them at a bit of an angle because you want them to trail down the side. So you, obviously you can put them in upright, and this one's already romping away anyway, it doesn't matter. But some of the less um, keen to trail ones, you pop them in on, on there at an angle, push them down, they're already on the way. Now if you're a bit nervous about the spacing you can obviously place them all in first and just see how spaced out they're going to be. I've actually unpacked these in quite tightly so it doesn't really matter but some people get quite nervous and then also by placing them in the pot they can kind of see how the end result's going to be. Another top tip which I've sort of picked up from customers is they buy their plants and then they quite often need a few more for another pot or for another scheme or something. So if you can't remember the names or the exact shade of um, pink or blue or whatever, keep your label for a bit and then you can always pop back to wherever. You don't have to come here, to wherever you get them from and um, get some extras if you need them. Because there's such a multitude you, you might forget what you've actually bought. There we go, that's my little million bells. Then my Bacopa. I'm just making a little hole with my hands. These disposable gloves are great because you can really feel through them and popping them in. And what you might have noticed, any gardeners amongst you, normally when you're planting, you like you wet the soil and wet the plant beforehand. Don't do that when you're making it with pots because it gets very muddy and you'll get it all over the leaves. As you can see we've already got a bit of compost on the leaves. We'll be able to brush those off quite readily. But if it's wet, it sticks and makes a, a mess. And um, it's just another chore to have to deal with to sort of try and dry them off and brush them off. So always, always use dry compost. And then we'll obviously give it a good drink at the end. Pop that one in. I'm not firming them in completely. 
a pale light blue in Abelia, which is very sweet. And I've still got the classic dark blue one here, which is also lovely. Popping those in. And then finally my little pink. Caliber Pearl at 1 million bells. I'll just squeeze, squeeze that in. Right around the geranium. Oh, I've broken a bit off there, never mind. Okay, so they're all in. So now we're gonna firm them in. And again, don't don't worry, you know, you can be fairly firm with it all. So I'm gonna firm it all in first, push down the compost that's risen and then see if I need to top it up. Make sure all these geranium leaves are out of compost, otherwise they'll just rot off. A little bit more, poke it in and firm it, and then fill in some little holes. We're nearly, we're nearly there really. And what I actually like to do is have quite an uneven surface on the top. And we also aim to be a couple of centimetres below the top of the pot with very good reason watering as you know you obviously need to water plants throughout the summer if it's not raining and if you don't have a gap at the top of the pot and you water them the water is literally going to roll off right down the sides and not penetrate the soil we're done it's pretty simple okay so that's it really um obviously it's going to get better and better as the plants start to grow and get themselves established. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about um, the care of your pot throughout the summer. <clears throat> and the first thing to talk about is deadheading. As I've mentioned earlier, some plants don't need deadheading, they'll naturally lose their, their flowers, but some will need their flowers taking out when they've gone over to um, enable more to grow. So a case in point is this verbena, and it starts off quite flat, and then as it gets older, you can see it gets longer, and these little flower heads to, um, come off. So all you need to do is nip it back to the next little leaf and just you can do it with your fingers or um, little pincers or scissors and then you deadhead it and then you see there's another little flower there that will grow pretty quickly so just a, a little pick over every now and again um, for deadheading watering um, make sure you keep it moist but not over watered obviously it's got the drainage at the bottom so if you want to in the summer it's more likely to dry out you could sit, sit the pot in a saucer catch the water and if you've got bricks or crocs terracotta it will absorb through that it sadly won't absorb through uh, polystyrene or plastic um, but that's why you often see saucers and so you yeah, keep it watered and I didn't really mention plants for really sunny sites or shady spots because bedding plants tend to like um, the sunshine the geraniums which we've all got here need a lot of sunshine but it also um, quite happy if they're dried out and not watered as often as some of the other plants. If you've got a really hot baking spot then geraniums are the way to go. If you've got a shady area where you want a pot or a hanging basket, uh, don't panic. Um, begonias are fantastic. Now this little chap here in uh, a few weeks time will be up here with bright bright orange flowers. This is an upright begonia and then there are also trailing begonias and they get absolutely huge and you do get a lot of bang for your buck. It's a bit of a hard sell at the moment, but they're fantastic and very good in a shady spot, as are fuchsias. You can get little upright bedding fuchsias for the middle and also trailing fuchsias, and they're really good in um, the shade as well. So, you know, don't panic if you don't think you've got the perfect conditions, there's always a plant. But what I would do at home is um, they're sort of romping away and starting to get a little bit jaded and tired, sort of around about July time. I would definitely start giving them um, a liquid feed, like tomato feed or a liquid uh, flower feed just when you're watering it dilute it just do it once a week and that will really pet them up and give them a new lease of life and as I say um, keep keep watering feeding and deadheading and they'll go right through to the frost sort of September October even into November time um, and hopefully give you a lot of pleasure many thanks